right on time for Friday with Mr. Bidan. Always a pleasure being your host. My name is Elijah Mongi. From a local and even global perspective, there is a lot happening to excite and even inspire the viewers. However, very little of that gets publicized simply because the media has always been built on the philosophy that what bleeds should lead. Here at WTV, we decided to change that script and say that what answers need should actually lead. And that's why every Friday we engage in a solutions-based conversation with our managing director, none other than Mr. Bidan Bugwa, who is going, of course, to share his perspective on what has been trending. And talking of matters trending, of course, we've been talking about Brexit, what this means for Kenyans, and why, from the first place, the British decided to follow that path. Thank you, Mr. Bidan, for finding time for us. Maybe I should just go straight to the topic of the day. Yes. What this means for Kenyans, Brexit, from the first place. David Cameron, though he resigned thereafter, he talked that is an act of democracy. And in fact, to quote him, he said he wasn't for the Brexit, but because British have spoken, he will be the first one to make sure that that actually happens. What's your take on that? Yes, I think the, the Western countries have been uh, uh, ascribing uh, some th many things they do to democracy. Sure. But when I looked at that democracy that they say that it took place in Britain, it's a, a very narrow line between what I would call democracy and what I am now creating a new word. I'm calling it democracy. Democracy. <laughs> That's a very interesting word. Maybe you can expound and maybe tell us why you've, uh, you know, talked of <laughs> democracy instead of democracy. I, I have been, uh, you know, reading literature regarding uh, Western society, how development of society, of, of, of democracy, starting with the Greek, mm. Greek philosophers. Uh, uh, some of the outstanding one in that area is uh, 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 Plato. Mm. But in the thinking of uh, the, the, the Greek thinkers of that time, they presupposed that democracy uh, must mean that there is knowledge and uh, information for you to make, to make that decision which is based on democracy. Knowledge and information. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I have been following interviews that are being conducted by BBC, by CNN, mm. and many, many people didn't seem really to understand exactly what this Brexit meant. And so there was no knowledge, what I would call knowledge, uh, and uh, objective facts. Hmm. Because you have to know, they are very objectively, uh, this is what pertains for those people who are going to remain hmm. in EU. Okay. Hard facts. And uh, what, similarly, what would portend for those people who are in Brexit if it, the, it is out? And that's where really you find that uh, uh, you don't get impression. Mm. Uh, they, are, they aroused the old patriotism okay. of British. You know, the great. Let me say the people who are extreme right mm. in Britain uh, they tend to nurse that idea uh, of uh, uh, that time when they had, they had colonies all over the world. They were the great, the formidable uh, Britain. That was then. Uh, the nostalgia mm. they have about, you know, themselves. 
And why I use the word uh, democracy is if you look at the time of Hitler, uh, Hitler mm. also thought that these guys who are coming there like Jews and others, they are affecting this superior race. Okay. And you know he was also elected by majority. The majority. So why he called it democracy is because apart from weeping their emotions mm. about that patriotism which costed the world millions and millions mm. of lives and an unnecessary war. So I think if you look those issues of nationalism mm. that is not very well informed. Uh, even a tribe can, you know, I'm saying it's not only for in, in their, you know, place. Mm. Uh, even Africa, you, you know, you can have people inspired by feeling of that we are the, the big or strong tribe like you saw in Rwanda. Mm, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let, yeah. me, let me just uh, cut you short because uh, yeah. very well, Mr. Bidan is talking of democracy that happened in Britain and many people called it democracy instead. So what's your take on that? We let you be the judge. But uh, Mr. Bidan, uh, we are going to bring this conversation home in the second segment. Yes. But for now, I just want us to look at what next after Brexit. Of course, we had the British Prime Minister David Cameron mm. resigning. And of course, there has been a lot of talk who is going to take over from David Cameron. Mm. Now we have Boris Johnson, yeah. who just the other day rolled himself out. <laughs> Why do you think uh, he's kind of shying away from taking that uh, mandate? I, I think, first of all, it shows uh, they had that very strong feeling of patri patriotism that I call it irrational patriotism. Irrational patriotism. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to exclude those who are migrating. But that was very well camouflaged. Mm. It was hidden. It didn't come out uh, very clearly that uh, uh, they really don't want migration. They want to be able to stop them at within their boundaries. Eh? Mm, because okay. the one of the 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 freedoms EU has is that people must move freely. Sure, there's that, the whole there's that issue of uh, movement yeah, or yeah. rather migration. That's what they didn't like now. The Britain. The Britain. So the, the so the, the future is that uh, uh, the way I see it is that any time you exclude yourself. Yeah, mm. you exclude others, you become poorer. Because even uh, if you look at the America that uh, came up with a, a lot of growth, innovation, mm. and so forth, uh, is one of the thing is that it has been getting through a green card, mm. thousands of people in quarter to their country. Also, in the Silicon Valley, you find that they are French people, they are British people, they are Indians, they are all the clever people in the world. Mm. They will get them and encourage them to go and work there in Silicon Valley. Yeah. Well, Mr. Biden, you've talked of something which has, uh, you know, hit me and you've said that, you know, the moment you exclude yourself from the rest of the people, then at one point you may become poorer. And now this brings me to the Brexit question yeah. and uh, Boris Johnson taking yeah. over because yeah. what you're simply saying is that maybe the future might not be so bright for yeah. Britain after yeah. pulling out from the EU. Yeah. Could that be the reason why Boris Johnson doesn't want to take over and fail? I, th I think he, you know, is a clever guy. Oh, okay. He senses, actually, probably they didn't expect to win, number one. 
Number mm. two, mm. following that, they had no plan that if we win, we will take Britain in the step one, step two, step three, mm. step four. It shows now there was no plan. There was no plan. Yeah. And so, already there are people feeling when they start to see the stock and the strength of their pound mm. and the uncertainty, they started uh, uh, hating Boris. Mm. And so he started to feel uh, this thing will also whittle down chances of his future leadership. Oh, okay, if he takes okay. it now. If he takes it now because now yeah. he will be coming so, from a very disadvantaged point. Yeah. Mm. So I would rather have somebody else take that risk. Oh. If he can, that person goes down with it, mm. well, that, that's it. Oh. Now we are going to take a short break, but when we come back, we want to bring this conversation home and see what this means for Africa, what this means for Kenya, and from the first place, how will Kenya be affected? Remember, for a very long time, our president Uhuru Kenyatta has always been uh, blamed for facing east. So now we have uh, Britain pulling away, that's west, so will that really affect us? And if it will, positively or negatively? You need to hear what Mr. Bidan has to say about that. So stay tuned. We shall be back in a moment. The great Mahatma Gandhi at one point said that you cannot strengthen the weak by weakening the strong. And you cannot help the poor by destroying the rich. Welcome to Friday with Mr. Bidan. We are talking about matters Brexit and uh, the pulling out of Britain from the European Union. How will that affect Africa and even Kenya, our country? And of course, Mr. Bidan is here to share his perspective. But remember, we always say that none of us is as smart as all of us. So we'd like to hear your say as well. SMS line is always open. 20058 is the number. On Twitter, you'll find us at WTVK. Provided use the hashtag Friday with Mr. B so that we're in a position to talk your conversation. Welcome back, Mr. B. Dan. I just want to go straight to the point of, you know, Kenya is our country yeah. and uh, how it will be affected by Brexit. And I want to start from the point. For a very long time, since Uhuru Kenyatta took, took over presidency in 2013, he has always been blamed for facing East. And there has been a lot of talk that Kenya now is facing east, that's why we have China and all that. So now we have Britain pulling out from the EU and we always concentrate on the east. This is west. Will this really affect us? Maybe you can start from there. Uh, it will not really affect us. Uh, I don't expect it to affect us because it's not even, it started actually with the Kibaki. Mm. And you may remember he made trip Sure. India, China. Uh, so Kenya is like, in a way, it is started to win itself off from the dependence with the uh, with British uh, economy. And then Uhuru came. And then again, that continued. That continued. So Kenya is like uh, a lady who is being wooed by many suitors yeah mm. and all the countries are looking now to Africa as a new market and the China has been very vigorous mm. yeah okay. and uh, of course people like Japan have already been very very aggressive if you see every other if you see eight cars Mm, probably five, six will be Osaka, Japanese. Japan. Sure. Uh, now Korea has also come very aggressively mm. into this market. Actually, Her yeah. Excellency, the President was here the other day. Yeah. And uh, so is uh, other countries that, 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 you know, like Turkey, doing a lot of business. South America, they are also trying very hard to get to this market. And so, I think it's a thinking that, uh, oh, because British 
are doing this or that. Mm. I don't think that it will be much. Yes. Even the statistics uh, I looked yesterday is like Kenya is now growing, has gone, the growth is almost 6%. Almost uh, 6%. From 55 Maybe, Mr. Biden, there is something maybe our generation doesn't understand. Because mm -hmm. you've talked of President Uhuru Kenyatta, President Kibaki having a kind of a rough relationship with the Britain, or rather with the yeah. West. But during the time of uh, President Mo, Moy, you've yes. not talked of that. Yes. And we know very well that yeah. even uh, the same Britain or yeah. the same West has been supporting yes. in, on the side of yes. the opposition. Yes. What is it that you know and maybe our generation doesn't know? Uh, yes. Uh, what uh, is to be known is that uh, the British at the time of Moy even though he was abusing the human rights of thousands of people, he crippled development in the areas that he felt he was not getting support. Mm. Uh, Britain were not ready to comment. And I remember personally going to, the, to see the British High Commissioner mm. the time of Moy and I managed to see the deputy who was called McLachlan. And uh, when I saw him, I told him that it is curious to note that uh, you don't talk about abuse of human rights that time. Mm. And you know his answer was that we uh, British Mm. We prefer to kind of uh, do it quietly. But when Kebaki took over, they were no longer quiet. When Uhuru took over, they were no longer quiet. So, uh, my thinking was mm. that uh, why they supported Moy, one, is because they felt he would contain aggressive uh, uh, Kikuyu business business people uh, who are to compete with them uh, with the British uh, so they wanted them contained mm, okay yeah uh, and this is why they supported Moy very strongly you remember he had crippled all the banks that were you know, uh, owned by people from Central, all of them. Even the ones that remained like uh, uh, Equity and the Family Bank, they were to operate mm. in Central in those uh, T zones and so forth and very small. Okay. And uh, if you look at them today, they are big, very big. Actually, you've talked of Equity Bank, which is the largest bank in terms of customers' basis. Yeah. We speak. Yeah. So, uh, and that now has taken a lot of business from, say, British banks like Barclays, you know. Uh, and that, uh, and uh, don't forget also Land Rover mm. was the flagship to show Brit Britain is here. And that's maybe why it was used by people in authority. It, it was used by the police, by the military, by the provincial administration. And then, you know, uh, uh, these leaders, uh, Kebake and uh, uh, Uhuru, they decided we are going to use other vehicles. To be uh, actually, you've just uh, talked of that, and the first time, uh, or rather, one of the times when uh, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta is going for these national uh, celebrations at Nyayo Stadium, we yeah. saw him riding in a Toyota Land Cruiser, and yeah. it got a lot of people talking because that's J that's Japan. Yeah. Mm. So that didn't augur well. Okay. With the British. And I believe even today they would prefer to have somebody who can help them contain this aggressiveness mm. that is putting them out of various 
businesses. People need to understand that uh, they have not been very neutral. Mm, in terms of yeah. our politics? Yeah. And so, uh, it, it, it's for, for, it will be better for Africa with uh, that British, Britain, which is now weaker. Just now moving forward in terms of market, how, how can we handle this considering that now they are out of the EU? How will our market be affected and what should we do moving forward, especially to do with our market? There is nothing serious that is going to happen to our market. One mm. of the things that could happen is that if the, their pound remains weak, mm. it means then we can buy goods from Britain cheap. cheap. The price will be cheaper. Oh, okay. Yeah? Mm. Because now, when the, their currency is very strong, mm. uh, you cannot buy much uh, yeah, sure. from them. And it has always been yeah. strong as it compared has been to dollar very, and very, euro. It has been very strong. Mm. But now when it's weaker, you can buy more. Mm. So that's the only, that, that's uh, the only thing. good news <laughs> for Britain. Mm. That uh, the, if it gets weaker and weaker, yeah, for us it will be a plus. Yeah, but uh, to wrap it up, you've said the main key reason that maybe we had the Brexit is not because of economic reasons, but rather the issue of immigration and all that. Britain really wants to just have its own people and restrict people from getting to UK. Yes, I think the key thing was migration. Mm. Uh, and you, you know the, the, the truth about migration is that they have migrated more than anybody. <laughs> For instance, they migrated to Australia. Sure. It was not originally mm. their, their continent, but they migrated there. Yeah. They migrated to uh, U.S. Okay. Hmm. They, mig they migrated to so many parts so of many the places. world, even in the EU, they have many of them have migrated, especially younger people, hmm. to all other European countries. So if they were to be told, go back, the way... They really want to restrict Yeah, the, the way they want to restrict. Mm. And this is why many young people, well, even they were demonstrating after Brexit. Mm. Because that was not what they wanted, the young people. So, uh, having migrated to other countries more than anybody, they should have been the most welcoming mm. and uh, leave it open. But also remember, they have caused that migration because they, they decided, for instance, to destabilize and attack Libya. Mm. And uh, they made sure Gaddafi was dead. Yes. Gaddafi had a very stable country. Mm. And now it beca has become haven for terrorists. Sure. And uh, because of this instability, many people are leaving and they're going to Europe. The mm. same as Syria. Mm. Yeah? So they have caused also, triggered this... This, this movement. This movement. Mm. Which now they want to say no. Yeah. So... Yeah. To me, Britain needs to rethink and uh, redefine the, 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 yeah. their, their foreign policy mm. and the ideals they are going to cherish, but not the way they have done things. Well, that's uh, Mr. Bidan, and it's always an honor speaking <laughs> to you. This is Friday with Mr. Bidan, giving his independent you know, ideas and perspectives of what he thinks of what is happening here in the country and even beyond and today he has talked of one key thing that i picked from our conversation that maybe what we saw in britain during the brexit is not democracy but democracy
democracy is the word that has been coined by our MD this particular, uh, you know, this particular point in time. But at the end of the day, we leave you to be the judge whether it was a wise decision for Britain to move out from the EU or not. And now for me, it's just to end the show. And I just want to leave you with one quote that was said by Francis Imbuga, the scholar. And this is what he said concerning, uh, you know, insanity because we've talked of democracy. When the madness of an entire nation disturbs a solitary mind, then it's not enough to say that the man is mad. Have a good time.